This is the craziest Xbox ever made and nobody bought it. You see, it's not that the design is anything crazy, but more the fact that this console just exists. And to understand why, we need to go back in time. It was E3 2013 when Xbox announced the next generations of consoles, which was the Xbox One. And alongside this was also another console, the Xbox 360E. The Xbox 360E was the grand farewell to the 360 that had sold around 80 million units at this point and was a roaring success. The goal of the 360E was to unify the Xbox lineup so that it matched the new Xbox One, making the older 360 feel more modern, being smaller, sleeker and quieter than the previous 360. 360 Slim. So that's cool, it's an Xbox 360 that looks like an Xbox One, but although at the time this is one of the most confusing consoles to ever be released, I was sat there watching it on my iPad mini like, what the heck? It kind of made a lot of sense. Although we have all burned it from our memory, the Xbox One launch was definitely not great. It's easy to forget all of the drama around Xbox banning you using pre-owned games, heavy integration with the Kinect, the device always being online, and Xbox's obsession with wanting you to use your console with your TV box. TV, TV and movies, TV, Xbox, watch TV. TV, TV, TV. However, amongst this car crash, there was a major flaw with the Xbox One's lack of, or rather non-existent support for backwards compatibility. You could not play all the Xbox original or Xbox 360 games on your new Xbox One. It just was not possible at launch. So I guess Microsoft's solution to this was to purchase an Xbox One and also purchase an Xbox 360E to complete your gaming experience. And in hindsight, it now kind of makes sense why they wanted both of these consoles to match. Because as crazy as this may sound, did Xbox intend to never kill the 360? Fortunately, we have a product for people who aren't able to get some form of connectivity, it's called Xbox 360. So I decided to buy an Xbox 360E used on Amazon to see what the console had to offer in 2022. So as promised, we do have the complete box from the seller, which is a great start. Is it still one of the best gaming consoles ever made and even a good budget option for somebody looking to play games super cheap? I am kind of disappointed by the condition of this console. As you can see, it looks really bad. Look at all of these scratches all over it. And I think this was a huge problem with the Xbox 360E and also the Xbox One, because of this glossy plastic finish, got scratched super easily. Considering the age of the console, there are some nice features that make it very easy to use with modern day devices. Because of the HDMI connection, I could easily connect this to my TV without any hassle, whereas much older Xbox 360s still have those AV ports, which makes your life a little bit more difficult. In addition, this Xbox 360E does have 250 gigabytes of internal storage, which is lots of space, especially for the Xbox 360 generation. Games on the 360 were much smaller and we could still play them directly off the disc without needing to install them onto the internal storage of our consoles, which made life so much better. When you got a brand new game, you could throw it straight into your console and start playing it literally straight away. In addition, the Xbox 360's dashboard is so much cleaner compared to its modern day counterpart. When you're navigating it, you notice how much simpler it is. Everything has its own category for the types of apps that you want to access, and also there's much less ads. When you're on the modern day Xbox dashboard, it's full of like sign up to Game Pass or 60% off sale. It's full of stuff that's trying to make you buy things, whereas on the 360 60, it's just super clean. Going back and playing games on the Xbox 360 was an awesome experience. It was a bit jarring at first. It took a while to adjust to like 720p, 30 FPS gameplay, and I was so shocked that we even played like that back in the day. But once you acclimatize to it, there's so many fantastic games on that generation of console. You've got the original Red Dead Redemption, Halo 3, Gears of War 2, Skate 3, even Grand Theft Auto 4, and the original Lego Star Wars Complete Saga, which in my opinion, I still think is better than the new version that came out this year. I'm a huge fan of the new version on my PS5. It's a lot of fun but it doesn't feel the same. The gameplay segments are so much shorter. There's like a tiny bit of gameplay and then a million cutscenes, then a tiny bit of gameplay and a million cutscenes. Nothing like the original. And another element I had completely forgotten about the Xbox 360 was the avatars. The Xbox avatars were so awesome. It gave almost a face and personality to your Xbox profile. And I was one of those saddos that used to change out his character's outfits. If it was Christmas, I'd put him in a Santa's outfit. If it was the World Cup, I'd put him in an England kit. I was constantly changing it. I, I really loved 
this feature when I was super little. And now on the modern day Xboxes, we just have a dead bland profile picture that means literally nothing. And I'm also really surprised that avatars aren't more prominent in 2022. We love microtransactions. Every single game is crammed with microtransactions so we keep spending money. And avatars were the perfect microtransactions on the Microsoft store. You could buy little accessories for them, shoes, pants, t-shirts, whatever it was. Obviously the reasons to purchase a 360 have declined a lot in recent years because of backwards compatibility on the newer consoles. And even on the Series X and S, you can get higher FPS and better graphic quality from those classic titles. But the affordability and cost of ownership of the Xbox 360 is unbelievable. If you are not interested in playing multiplayer, you don't need an Xbox Live Gold subscription. You can get a console for dirt cheap and some games on disc are like 50p, one pound or two pounds. It's, it's unbelievable how cheap they are. And I understand that the Xbox Series S is definitely like the best budget option for modern gaming, but the lack of internal storage is a huge cost. You've got to get that Seagate expansion card and upgrade that pretty quickly. And then you also need an actual subscription to Game Pass. So every single month you are forking out £15, £15 every single month to access games because you don't have that disk drive. So I do see how attractive the 360 still can be. Also, the Xbox 360 is very easy to hack because there's very little security on these consoles anymore. You can install a lot of different softwares. It gives you access to thousands and thousands of games for free. Also, inside of this software, you can even tweak the performance of your Xbox. So you could even make it a little bit quicker and also run better. It's hard for me to love the Xbox 360e like I do the Xbox 360 Elite, which was the console that I owned and spent many hours of my childhood play. Unfortunately, this console reminds me of the darkest times of Xbox when we almost lost the brand completely due to a lack of vision and them having no idea what they were doing. And that was until our savior, Phil Spencer. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks to Phil Spencer's leadership and the new team at Xbox, the brand is unrecognizable today and they've made some incredible moves by buying huge studios and creating a very strong library of first party games. And personally, I think Xbox is destroying PlayStation with this latest generation. And if you want to learn why the Xbox Series S is better than the PS5, you should check out this video next.